uh, I would just share a quick um, background to give a sort of scope in terms of the work done in Dominica and then to go on to um, elaborate on some of the interventions through the project as it relates to the use of the vetiver grass. Um, for those of you that are on the call that probably know Dominica, we're working in the Eastern coast and we worked with uh, two, two main communities, Pilit Sufre and San Suve. And the reason why we selected those communities because of their high vulnerabilities in terms of um, erosion, as well as, as we, as Jimmy indicated, the project had a scope, a scope dealing with the upland and coastal, um, the coastal impact based on upland activities. So the both communities certainly um, provide that kind of landscape. We could see ex exactly what the project was seeking to address in in that particular community. Now, um, I also want to indicate that. Vectiver, while it's not new to Dominica, the two communities that we are speaking of do not have a, 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 a history of using Vectiver in any large way. We, we have seen the use of Vectiver further up in the Northeast, in the Kalinago territory and some of the other communities uh, on the Northeast coast. Now, we, have, we introduced Vectiver in a number of um, areas, and I would like to just touch on some of the areas. We looked at Vectiver as a as a as a as a remedial action or remedial approach in along the roadways, especially in newly cut roads where a lot of the soil or the slopes were exposed, and we there, there was Vectiver planted on the, along those slopes, and we have seen some positive um, impact of, of the use of the grass. Um, in the past, quite a few of the ornamental um, crops or, or what we call use of things like croton. Well, uh, we use croton to stabilize some of these slopes and we saw that uh, some of these actions, um, we would see some erosion still taking place because of the distance the crotons would be planted, the distance from each other. But if the use of the, the, the inclusion of the vetiver is certainly one that reduced in terms of the uh, soil being moved into the drains and blockage of the drains as well as holding the land in, in, in the case of, of the roads, the, the, the road sites. We saw, we also use it in new housing development areas where they had quite a bit of movement of soil and backfilling. So the, 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 um, the grass was used along the borders again to help stabilize some of the slopes that would have been created based on the backfill. And very importantly, we, in terms of some of the main sites, we, we inserted or we integrated Vectiver into the whole farming system. And as you're aware, um, in those communities, we have farmers operating on small scales uh, in their backyards in some cases, and also to integrate, um, they have a more integrated cropping system where they would have things like the bay and other roots and tubers and so on. And in some cases, they're, they're planting on very, very steep slopes. So we have now introduced vetiver as part of the farming system, uh, and we planted it in based on the guidance provided by the IA movement to help reduce erosion. But what was important is we 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 sort of taught the farmers the use of the vetiver not only in the whole stabilization, but the the use of the vetiver in the in the livelihood aspects in terms of the grain business, using the the the, the the grass, not only for its roots purpose, but also for the, the leaves, where the leaves can be used as a mulch, as well as to use the leaves in the whole craft industry. So we promote the green business around the Vectiver. So that is something that we, 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 we saw as a, as a positive coming up from the discussion with some of the farmers. We have trained quite a bit of the farmers in, well, especially the women in terms of the craft, as well as the other use of Vectiver. We also worked a little outside the community, working with a site at, at Sylvania. And the reason again is to, because we wanted to promote the use of vective and slope stabilization, but more so to complement other forms of engineering as it relates to, to land stabilization. We know in the history of Dominica, we have been using the Gabian baskets in terms of um, slope stabilization, but in itself cannot really um, control, you cannot have the Gabian basket throughout the slopes. So that's an advantage of the vetiver that can be spaced at different distance along the slopes to, to help, help hold the soil. 
and we can again complement other form of engineering and effective it seems to be very effective and we do have that as a as a demonstration site or we build into that demonstration site the use of defective air. So basically, these are the experiences that we are we have been exposed to in terms of use of defective air, and we are hoping to um, transfer some of these um, techniques into into other neighboring communities. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Ken, for um, the insight on what um, how you use the evacuation system in, in Dominica. Um, so we're now going to ask Mr. Craig Thomas, National Specialist of ICA and um, Antigua Barbuda, to give us an insight on the application. Let me just check those again. Um, at Cook's Landfill and Antigua's lessons learned. Ken, um, sorry, Craig. Okay, good. Good morning, everybody from sunny Antigua. Um, similar to my colleague, um, Kenton Dominica, I'll give a little background um, into the project and our experiences in Antigua and Barbuda. Um, but I would like persons to take note of my background. And that background basically is the location of where we are implementing the activity. That is the area called Hods, uh, Hansen's Bay. And that is the largest mangrove swamp in Antigua and Barbuda. And so the implementation site is actually at the, um, the base of this bay, which, uh, which is adjacent to the old Cook's landfill, which is a sanitary landfill. Um, the vetiver grass is not a grass that is um, invasive to Antigua and Barbuda. Um, yeah, um, it basically has been growing in Antigua and Barbuda. However, due to the expansion of our residential area, um, the areas where which occupied the vegetable grass would have been no use for housing. So um, presently, we don't have that large area of vegetable grass um, present in Antigua and Barbuda. So when this project basically arrived, uh, we were able to source the vetiver grass, 6,500 um, slips from Dominica. Again, sourcing those slips from Dominica, we actually followed all the phytosanitary um, rules and regulation where Dominica and Antigua and Barbuda, the Ministry of Agriculture, played a huge role for the, the transfer of those um, slips to Antigua. Um, as I said before, the the implementation site is located at the old sanitary landfill, which is known as the Cook's Landfill for those persons who are from Antigua. And that area would have um, posed a number of challenges uh, which we would have experienced during the implementation phase. We started to implement um, the project at that area in October of last year, during which that is the time where you will have um heavy rainfalls um so we had heavy rainfalls during the month of october the month of november and so we would have we would have planted uh over five thousand slips of vetiver grass and so for those persons who know antigua we are considered one of the driest country in the region so when it got to around january of 20 of 2022, of 2022, we experienced some prolonged droughts. So what you're seeing here in some of the photos where you see jeep irrigation systems set up, um, water harvesting catchments set up, these were not originally a part of the plan because we were of the opinion that we could have planted these plants down at the implementation site and have them grow in this environment. And it's a lesson learned for us that um, not talking about vetiver grass, but plants in general, this is something that we have to take into consideration whenever you're going to establish any sort of um, planting in a particular area. We have to take into consideration the climate change that usually affect the country. So what we would have done through our partners with Cardi and the Ministry of Agriculture, we were able to design 
a gravity feed um, drip irrigation system using 1,000 gallon tanks uh, where we divided up the, the space. So we had 3,000 feet of vetiver glass in three rows and we divided up each row into three to 400 feet to facilitate the drip irrigation system. Uh, one of the lessons learned that, um, we, that, that, that we gathered from this project is that the planting of, of the vetiver glass or glasses in general, um, the root system or the root, the root system in terms of how you go about planting these plants, um, it's something that we learned where we had to consider planting these plants in bags mixing the soil with the soil from the from the landfill with soils from where we had we have the nurseries um, so that the plants can establish a good root system before we would transfer them because this area is an area that is high in um, is high saline has a high saline content and with that you have a lot of leachate of toxic chemicals coming from the old um, landfill which basically posed a problem so with implementation of the drip irrigation system and establishing plants, um, transferring plants with established root system to the site um, assisted um, the project um, in, a, in a good way. Uh, one of the things that one of the photos that you saw, you have also seen here is a photo where there was some inundation of the plants that were previously planted in October. The area in Hudson Bay, whenever there is um, high rainfall, the the mango would basically um, come close to the the, the Cook's landfill. So again, that basically taught us a lesson where we had to change some of the the the, the design in terms of how we're going to plant and where we're going to plant. And from recent photos from areas that now are. Uh, that has a lot of water because it has been raining in Antigua, but in Antigua for the last couple of weeks. But those plants, now that they have established the high saline water from Hudson Bay is not affecting those plants. So these are some of the things that we need to consider whenever we are going to establish any sort of um, introduction of any plants, whether um, fruit trees, grasses, any sort of plant. These are some of the things that you have to take into consideration, the, the climate conditions, um, during the dry the dry period and also during the wet period. And I said, we would have learned that um, because of the location of where we were, the introduction of, of a drip irrigation system would have saved this project um, somewhat. And the plants, now that they have been there for a year, have now established them and have now adapted. And I think this is one of the, 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 the objectives of the project is to have an adaptation approach to introduction of, of these plants in this particular area. Um, similar to my colleague Kent, um, there's a green business component in this project. And to date, uh, you have persons in Antigua and Barbie who would have learned um, through training um, from facilitators from Trinidad, how they can basically utilize or add value to the vetiver grass. And you have persons here making soaps craft materials, beverages, um, when I say beverages, wines, um, oils, and persons are also utilizing the vetiver grass as a landscaping um, mechanism, uh, especially if you live on slope area. So we have, we in Antigua are making use of, of, the, of the vetiver grass, um, similar to making use of other, plant, other plants um, that we can adapt so that we can actually add value and basically make a business out of it.